Hi everyone. So I know a lot of you out there have eagerly been awaiting this video. So I just want to start off by saying thank you for your patience and how long it has taken me to actually get this video done for you. But today we're going to be talking about sterilizing potting soil for reuse. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you should not reuse potting soil. I have mentioned in past videos that I do reuse them in certain situations and not others. And sometimes I sterilize it and sometimes I don't. But I did recently dry rot a lot of plants and there was a lot of soil that was affected and honestly, it's just too much money for me to waste it. So I decided to sterilize it for reuse. Now I do wanna start off by saying that I really do not recommend reusing soil when you've had a pest outbreak. That is the one and only time when I am like, no, I'm not reusing it. The odds of the pest surviving is pretty slim using these methods I'm talking about but I just don't want to risk it. I don't want to spread pests to my other plants. But beyond that, things like root rot or just old soil, you can definitely sterilize it for reuse. Now, there are some pros and cons to sterilizing in general, and there are definitely some pros and cons to each of the methods we are going to cover today. But the number one thing to keep in mind is that when you do sterilize soil, Yes, you're killing off the bad things in the soil, but you're also killing off the good things in the soil. That is pretty much the biggest con. But in my experience, it's not something that's going to be detrimental to your plants, especially if you're fertilizing on a regular basis. I think you're going to be okay. Now, at its base level, when we're talking about sterilizing soil, you need one of three things in order to successfully make that happen. Either heat, steam, or chemicals. So let's talk about heat first, since that is one of the most popular methods to sterilize soil. So when you are heating soil with the intent of killing off any bad bacteria, viruses, pests, anything of that nature, you need to get it to a minimum temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. However, there are some viruses and pests that are heat resistant and won't die at that temperature. In my experience though, those are typically not the ones you're going to find in your houseplant soil. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. You can actually go up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit in order to kill off those heat resistant ones as well. However, anything over 180 degrees Fahrenheit and you run the risk of phytotoxicity. So what is phytotoxicity? Well, phytotoxicity basically means that your plants are unable to grow as they normally would. And part of the reason for that is at such high temperatures above 180 degrees Fahrenheit, it basically triggers an exchange of like manganese, soluble salts and other organic compounds. I feel like I'm probably forgetting one thing in there. Hold on. Ammonium. I knew I was forgetting one. <laughs> Exchange of manganese, ammonium, soluble salts, and other toxic organic compounds. They build up at those high temperatures and they're harmful to your plants. So I highly recommend not going above 180 degrees Fahrenheit if you're going to use any of the methods I tell you about today that involve heat. So the first method I want to talk about is actually microwaving your soil because this is a very popular one that you will find all over the internet. And basically this process is good if you have not a ton of soil. I mean, I guess you, if you had a ton, you could just keep repeating the process over and over again, but there's only so much you can put in a microwave at a time. But if you do want to try using the microwave to sterilize soil, basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wet down the soil first. You want to get it to where it's consistently moist. You don't want it too wet, but you don't want dry patches either. You're going to take about roughly two pounds or less of soil, put it into a large Ziploc bag. Do not seal that bag off, leave it open. You're then going to put it into your microwave and you're going to microwave it for probably roughly two minutes, but really you just want to microwave it till you get somewhere between 160 degrees Fahrenheit and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I highly recommend for these first few methods that we're going to talk about. If you're going to attempt them, make sure you have a meat thermometer that you can use to check the temperature of the soil so you can make sure you've reached the critical temperature and also not gone over the other critical temperature. But once you've done that, you're going to want to carefully remove that bag from the microwave and you're going to want to let that soil completely cool down and dry out before you use it again. Now, this sounds like a pretty easy process and it is, but you guys, it will stink your house up. It will stink your house up. Cooked soil is not exactly the best smell in the world. So just be pre prepared for that. That is hands down, probably the biggest con, in my opinion, of using this process. Once again, another con is the fact that you can only do so much at a time. So if you do have a lot of soil you're having to do this with, this might not be the best option for you. But there are other methods to heat up your soil. Another popular one is using your oven. Once again, though, this is going to stink up your house. So if that's a problem, don't do it. But if you do want to try using your oven, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 
While it is preheating, once again, you're gonna want to moisten down that soil, consistently moist, not too wet, no dry patches, and you're gonna wanna put that into a baking pan or on a baking sheet, preferably one that's probably about three inches to four inches deep, and then you're gonna cover that with foil. Once your oven has reached 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna pop that into the oven and you are going to bake it for about 30 minutes, or once again, until it has reached a temperature of between 100 degrees and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. You're then gonna remove that soil, and once again, you're gonna wanna let it cool down and completely dry out before you use it again. Now, there is one other thing I wanna caution you guys about when you're choosing a heat method to sterilize your soil, and that includes not only the two methods we've already talked about, but also the next two we're gonna talk about. Please be mindful about what amendments you have added to that soil. If we are talking about just straight potting soil, no problem, you guys, with nothing else in it, you should be fine. But when we start adding things like horticultural charcoal, pumice, perlite, you know, bark, all those good fun things, you just need to be mindful of what you're putting in there and is it something that is potentially going to combust when you try to sterilize it using heat? Because I mean, the last thing we wanna do is cause a fire when trying to sterilize our soil. And since there are so many different amendments that people use in their soil, I was gonna to try to look up and cover everything I could think of today for you and let you know if it was combustible at the temperatures we're talking about or not, but there are just too many to cover you guys. And I don't want somebody to think because I didn't mention one and they use it that it's safe and then it turns out it's not. So just do your due diligence and research to see if it's gonna be combustible if you're not certain based on that research, then don't use a heat method. The last method we're gonna talk about today is definitely the one I would use if you have any questions as to whether something might catch fire. But moving on to our next method. So this next method is actually steaming your soil. Now, I do not personally have the correct equipment to do this, so I'm gonna be borrowing some diagrams to show you from a website. But for this method, you're gonna be taking your moistened soil and you're gonna be putting it into mason jars. You wanna go about four inches deep worth of soil. You're then gonna screw the lid onto those mason jars. You are going to put them into your pressure cooker if you are using a pressure cooker, and I will cover the alternative method to a pressure cooker in a second, but I believe most pressure cookers come with like a wire rack that you can put in the bottom of them, but if they don't, you're gonna need a wire rack or something like that to elevate the mason jars a little bit. And then you're gonna wanna add about two centimeters of water to the bottom of that. This is what's gonna help to create the steam. You're then gonna put the jars into the pressure cooker and you're gonna wanna make sure they're spaced out so they're not like actually touching each other because you want room for the steam to kind of travel around in between the jars. And it is okay if the bottom of the jars is slightly in the water, you just don't want it going like all the way up the jar. So then you're gonna put the lid on that pressure cooker and you're gonna wanna turn the valve on the pressure cooker to where it's all the way open. If you start with it closed, it typically will build up steam too quickly without the temperature getting high enough, is my understanding, for it to really work. You're then gonna turn the pressure cooker on, let it heat up, and once steam starts escaping from that valve, you wanna close it to create 10 pounds worth of pressure. Once you do that, you're going to basically cook that soil for approximately 15 minutes, but once again, you're gonna to wanna to test the temperature of the soil when you take it out and make sure it's gotten above 160 degrees Fahrenheit and has not gone over 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, after that, once again, you're gonna to wanna to let that soil completely cool and completely dry before you reuse it. Now, if you don't have a pressure cooker, you can recreate this process on your stove, kind of, I guess it's almost like a double broiler type thing. I just didn't have a pot big enough or a wire rack that would fit in a pot to do it this way. But basically, you're just gonna take a pot that is large enough, put a wire rack down in the bottom of that, or if you do have a double broiler that's big enough, you could do that as well. But you need to be able to get those mason jars of soil down in there, and it has to be low enough for you to actually put a lid on that pot. But basically, if you do have a setup that will work for this, you're gonna put the lid on the pot. You might wanna tilt it slightly. It's kinda like, you know, when you're cooking rice, sometimes you gotta tilt it so it doesn't boil over type situation. But you're gonna wanna bring that water to a boil. And then once you have it at a boil, you're gonna wanna reduce the heat to medium. And you're typically gonna need to leave it there for about 30 minutes. But once again, you're always gonna wanna check that temperature of that soil and make sure that you've gotten to the appropriate range without going too far over. Now, once again, this is going to create a not so great smell going on. Now, it won't be quite as bad because you do have a sealed jar of soil, but it's still gonna stink, especially after you take the jars out and open them and are letting it cool and dry out. So definitely another con. Also, you just have to do this in small batches. So if you do have a lot of soil, it's not really that practical. 
Now the next method of using heat to sterilize soil is actually a good alternative if you want to use heat but you don't want your house to be all stinky. So this method is called solarization. Now the problem with this method is typically you are only going to be able to do this during the summer months and if you live in a very hot place like I do, you're going to be better suited for this method than other people. But solarization basically just involves using the sun to sterilize your soil. Now, if you guys have heard about this before or if you've researched it before, you might have seen where it says it can take four to six weeks. What people are talking about when they say that is a lot of people will use solarization to prep entire flower beds. Hi, Theo. <laughs> I feel like he's up to mischief, you guys. But anyways, a lot of people will use solarization to prep entire flower beds. And when you're trying to do a whole flower bed outside, yes, that can take weeks. But if we're using our potting soil that we have taken out of our plants and we're not talking about a ton of soil, you can accomplish this in way less time than that. But basically you're going to put the soil, pre-moisten it once again, as you have with every other method we've talked about so far, you're gonna put it onto a baking sheet or in a baking pan, once again, about three to four inches deep max. And then you're gonna to wanna to cover that with some type of clear plastic. Sturdier the better, because we know when we put things outside, sometimes plastic gets torn pretty easily. So after you've done that, you're gonna set your pan or tray outside in direct sunlight. And according to the University of California, if you are doing it by this method of putting it just in a small baking pan or on a baking sheet like that, you only need to have it out there for about six hours, getting up to that required temperature range. Once it's got up to that required temperature range and it's been outside for six hours, you should be good to go. Just bring it back in, let it cool down, let it dry out, and then you can reuse that soil. Now, before we move on to our next process that you can use, and this next process is the one that I 100% recommend is my preferred method, I do wanna to touch on boiling your soil. So when people say boiling to sterilize soil, I think a lot of people think like, oh, I'm gonna put my soil in a pot of water on the stove and I'm gonna boil it. That's really not the process. You can sort of sterilize soil using boiling water, but the way that you do it is basically boil water on your stove and then pour it over your soil. I honestly am not a big fan of this method. My problem with this method is that yes, the water is hot enough when you're pouring it onto your soil, but your soil is not necessarily getting to the temperature it needs to be or being at that temperature long enough because boiling water cools down relatively quickly. So for that reason, I don't feel like it's the most efficient method does it work? Maybe. Is it going to actually get everything or kill everything? I don't know. There's just too many question marks for me. That's why I don't recommend it. But the next process I want to talk about involves chemicals. And before we get into this, there is also a lot of information online about using formaldehyde to sterilize your soil. You 100% can do that. But formaldehyde is like a whole nother ball game. And you can successfully sterilize soil using just hydrogen peroxide. And that is honestly what I do. Once again, it's my preferred method. Nothing gets stinky in your household. Is it a little bit messy? Not really that much more messy than what you're already doing. So when you are sterilizing soil with hydrogen peroxide, you are gonna to want to use a mixture of one part hydrogen peroxide to one part water. Now, a lot of resources out there will tell you just spray the soil down with this mixture. That's BS. A lot of resources out there will tell you just pour it over your mixture while you have your mixture in like a colander or you know a pot with drainage holes or something like that. BS. Let me tell you why. So here's an example. So in this example, I actually put my soil into a strainer and I just poured the mixture over the soil, making sure I was getting every part of the soil hit with that. However, in my experience, this does not actually kill every single pest. Sometimes not all the pests get touched by it, or I don't know, some pests are just more resistant to the quick water down of it, which you can actually see in this example. There are still live bugs crawling around in here. I waited a good five minutes. They were all still crawling around on there. And honestly, you guys, I don't know what those bugs are. I don't know if that's some kind of fungus gnat, stage of fungus gnat or something else. I was trying to look it up online. I don't know, but I've got that in quite a few plants right now. And they were all ones that were near my kitchen door. So I think it's something that like crawled from under the door or something and got in the plants. I'm not having it anywhere else, but it's annoying. So clearly doing it that way, those bugs survived. So here is my preferred way to do it. I actually like to put my soil into a bowl 
I then pour my hydrogen peroxide mixture into that bowl, making sure that it is more mixture than soil. And then I kind of just swish it around in there to make sure everything is getting completely submerged into that hydrogen peroxide water mixture. I then take it and strain it through the strainer. And then I lay it out on a cookie sheet in a thin layer and leave it there to dry. This works, you guys. As you can see here, no more crawling bugs. No crawling bugs anywhere. This was the same batch of soil. I just did the first half of it, pouring it over like I showed you. I did the second half of it, pouring the mixture over it in a bowl and basically soaking it. This works really, really well. And you can reuse the leftover mixture. You can keep reusing it until you don't have any mixture left because obviously a lot of it's getting absorbed by the soil and then just mix some more up. Now I did do this in just a small bowl because it was easier for me to kind of demonstrate that for you guys. But if you have like a lot of soil, obviously use a bigger bowl, try to get it all done in one batch if you can. But if you can't, just do it in small batches over time. But it is one of the easiest, in my personal opinion, ways to sterilize soil. Now it is gonna cost you a bit more money than the other methods, assuming you don't have to buy equipment that you didn't have, because I don't have pressure cooker, like I said. But it still is just really, really easy and hydrogen peroxide is not that expensive. Once again, hit up your local dollar store. That's where I buy mine from all the time. So that is the method I would recommend. And I did run a little bit of an experiment for you guys. I did take some of that dry rotted soil. I potted it up without treating it and I potted some of my epipremnum cuttings into that and they have not been doing well. They have been yellowing off. One of them just completely died the other day and I was just so frustrated, I just threw it in the trash. So it completely rotted. So it is possible for soil to maintain bad things to the point that when you pot up new plants, they won't do well. Now, some of my plants are kind of doing okay that I ran that test on, but they have lost a lot more cuttings than normally if I had been using fresh soil. However, when I used the sterilized soil on some of the plants, actually on some of the dry rotted plants that caused the problem in the first place, when I potted them back up, I used the soil that I had sterilized with that hydrogen peroxide mix and they are doing 100% A-OK. -okay. And the other nice thing about using this method is that you don't really have to worry as much about what soil amendments are in your soil because nothing's potentially going to catch fire. You just need to make sure that if you're using something a bit obs more obscure that it's not gonna cause some kind of weird reaction. I would be more concerned with like, if you were putting anything that's like a fertilizer, like a slow release fertilizer or something like that, maybe you might wanna do a little bit of research about how hydrogen peroxide might affect that. But honestly, my some of my store-bought plants that have slow release fertilizer and when I bought them, I've watered them with hydrogen peroxide water mix before and I've never had a problem. So I think in general, you're gonna be okay. But if there is something that you use in your soil that you have a question about, just see if you can find some information on it. If not, comment down below, let me know. I'll see if I can find some information on it for you. But in general, this is usually kind of the safest, easiest, best process for sterilizing your soil. Now, I realize in this video, I have really just been focusing on soil-based substrates and how to sterilize those. However, that does not mean that you cannot sterilize and reuse things such as pond, leca, or sphagnum moss. I honestly just have not experimented with those very much. And sphagnum moss, I don't really like to use it because it isn't a very sustainable resource. But because of that, I do highly recommend sterilizing and reusing it if you are someone who uses sphagnum moss. But in the case of all three of those, it's a lot simpler, you guys. You just wanna make sure with LECA and Pond that you've removed as much organic material as possible. With sphagnum moss, it is organic material in and of itself. Having to try to remove things is hard. If you've used sphagnum moss, you know. But get as many like roots that may have been left behind or whatever out of there as you can. And then with all of these, you're just gonna boil them in a pot of water. If you're boiling sphagnum moss, usually about 10 minutes will do it. If you're boiling leca or pond, you wanna go somewhere between probably like 20 to 30 minutes to really make sure that you've killed off anything in there. Just strain them out in a colander afterwards, let them cool down, and then you can reuse them again. But hopefully this information helps you guys out and helps you save a little bit of money because now you can reuse soil and not have to buy new soil and soil components as often. If you have found this video helpful today, I'd appreciate it if you would click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.